Splicing conductors with wire nuts is a skill every apprentice electrician and a lot of DIYers need to master. In this video, we'll cover how to choose the right wire nut, make a proper splice, and verify that connection is solid. We'll even look inside a wire nut to understand really what's going on. We will not be discussing Wago style connectors in this video. Hey, my name is Dustin. I'm a licensed master electrician. Welcome to this episode of Smarter Sparky. Before we talk about how to use a wire nut correctly, we need to understand what it's actually doing. Most people think of a wire nut as just a plastic cap. While that's partially true, there's a little more going on under the hood. Here's a simple cutaway of a wire nut. Notice there's a metal spring insert within the wire nut. That's what's actually holding the wires together. When you twist a wire nut, it essentially threads this coil onto the wires, which squeezes them together. This not only allows the wires to make electrical contact, but it also creates a solid mechanical connection, keeping the conductors from coming apart. The most perfect splice in the world will still fail if you use the wrong wire nut. All wire nuts have a range of wire sizes and conductor quantities that they can work with. Here's a box of wire nuts from the local big box store. Right on the front, we can see these wire nuts are good from 22 gauge, the smallest, to six gauge, the largest. Listed on the side of the packaging, however, it shows all of the wire combinations that the wire nuts are approved for. For example, these wire nuts are good for one to five number 12 gauge wires or one to six number 14 gauge wires and so on. But what if you need to splice a 12 gauge wire to a pair of 14 gauge wires? Now, unfortunately, these DIY grade wire nuts can leave it ambiguous whether or not that combination is acceptable. Some professional grade wire nuts like these here not only list the wire ranges, but they also have a wire combination matrix available online that lists all of the acceptable combinations. Perhaps in a future video, we can dive deeper into how to read these matrices. This box of big blues includes the list of all approved combinations right on the box. Another consideration is that most standard wire nuts are only listed for use with copper conductors, not aluminum. If you are connecting to aluminum wires, make sure your wire nut connector is specifically listed for that use. Most wire nut problems don't start at the wire nut. They start before it ever goes on. It's crucial to strip the insulation back far enough that the bare conductors come into full contact with the internal spring in the wire nut, but not so far that the bare wire is hanging out past the bottom. No insulation should end up inside the spring and no copper should be visible outside of the wire nut. Strip length varies depending on the size of the wire nut. For these mid-range wire nuts, about 5 eighths of an inch is the sweet spot. For larger wire nuts like this big blue, the manufacturer recommends 7 eighths of an inch of insulation stripped out. Naturally, smaller wire nuts are going to require a shorter strip length. Making the splice is slightly different depending on the wire combination you're connecting. If we're simply connecting two solid conductors, in this case, two solid 14 gauge wires, we will strip the wires back to approximately 5 eighths of an inch, line the ends of the conductors up, and screw the wire nut on while applying gentle downward pressure on the splice. It works the same way for two stranded conductors and three solid or stranded conductors are done the same way as well. Strip them, line them up, and twist the wire nut on. Things change when connecting stranded wire to solid wire. The issue here is the spring grabs the two wire types differently, which can potentially cause the splice to fail. Typically what happens is the solid wire gets grabbed first by the wire nut and the stranded wire gets pushed out of the connection. To combat this, when connecting stranded to solid wire, instead of aligning the ends of the wires, we want the stranded wire about an eighth of an inch higher than the solid wire. This causes the stranded wire to bend slightly over the top of the solid wire, which actually helps prevent it from being pushed out of the connection. There are so many wiring combinations and covering all of the permutations would make this video insanely long. One last tip I'm gonna give you here is if the solid wire is smaller than the stranded wire in a mixed splice, it's usually acceptable to align the wire ends rather than having that stranded wire a little bit taller 
smaller. If the solid wire is smaller than the stranded wire, align them because that pushing problem can actually sometimes end up happening to that solid wire instead. Honestly, for every splice that you make out of these weird combinations, you're gonna have to try the splice out and see what the best technique is for that particular combination. These big blue wire nuts are listed for up to six 12 gauge wires, which looks like this. A seventh wire will physically fit, but keep in mind, this configuration is not permitted by the manufacturer. There are certainly electricians out there who do this and other unapproved combinations regularly. Just remember that when they do, they are assuming the liability for that connection under their license. Some electricians like to pre-twist their wires before installing a wire nut and others don't. Personally, I typically don't pre-twist and for most standard splices, it doesn't really seem to be necessary. When installed correctly, the internal spring of the wire nut is designed to twist and squeeze the conductors together on its own. Now that said, there are situations where I will pre-twist. For example, when dealing with larger conductors, mixed wire types, or combinations that are right at the upper limit of the wire nut, a light pre-twist can help keep everything aligned and prevent one conductor from backing out during installation. If you do pre-twist, it should be neat and controlled and not overdone. There's no reason to twist eight inches of conductors outside of the wire nut. You only need one or two twists just to keep the wires together at the beginning. Another thing worth mentioning is that wire nut drivers exist. Now I have a hand operated wire nut driver that allows you to insert a wire nut and use it like a crank to install the connection. If you're making a lot of splices, this can save a lot of wear and tear on your wrist over the course of a day. They also make drill powered wire nut drivers. Now I don't personally own one, but I've seen them used. And when they are used, properly, they can save a lot of time and reduce even more wrist strain, especially on large jobs. However, when used incorrectly, they can easily over twist a splice, which creates problems down the road. Over twisting can make future troubleshooting and maintenance a headache. And in some extreme cases, it can actually cause the conductor to break through the top of the wire nut, potentially exposing live copper. No matter how you install a wire nut, by hand or with a tool, the goal is a secure connection, not maximum torque. After the connection has been made, it's very important to check the connection. Now, I've been an electrician for over 13 years, and after every wire nut I put on, I still check the connection. To check the connection, you simply pull on each conductor individually to see if it pulls out of the wire nut. If even a single wire moves or slips, the splice needs to be remade. A properly installed wire nut should lock the conductors in place and prevent any movement. You should also perform a visual inspection to ensure that no bare copper is exposed beyond the bottom of the wire nut and that no insulation is pinched up inside the wire nut. Some common mistakes with wire nuts include using the wrong size, putting too many wires in, mixing solid and stranded conductors incorrectly, reusing damaged or stretched out wire nuts, or leaving exposed copper beyond the bottom of the wire nut. Here's something I was taught many years ago. Once your connection has been made and you go to put the splice in a box, the wire nuts should be facing up. I was told wire nuts are hats, not buckets. This makes total sense. If debris or moisture gets in the box, we want it to shed off the wire nut instead of getting trapped inside of it. That debris can cause premature corrosion and eventual failure of the splice. Here's a tip when you need to splice more wires than a single wire nut allows. For example, what if we need to connect eight 14 gauge conductors. A big blue is only listed for six 14s, and these tan reds are also listed for six 14s. Rather than putting all of them under one wire nut, we can put four conductors under each wire nut with a jumper wire connecting the two. If you use this technique, make sure you're following proper conductor ampacity requirements. They also make these green wire nuts with a hole in the top designed specifically for connecting grounding conductors like so. It's important to never use these for hot or neutral wires because the hole can leave bare conductors exposed at the top of the wire nut, creating a potential shock hazard. Use these green wire nuts only for grounding connections to stay safe 
and code compliant. Real quick story for you. When I was a third year apprentice, my journeyman and I were putting up some lights in the parking garage of a brand new apartment complex. We had all the lights up and all of the conduit was ran. All that was left was for the wire to be pulled and terminated. The job foreman wanted my journeyman and I to start working on the main service, so he put two brand new apprentices on wire pulling and splicing duty. It took them about a week to finish the lights, and when we went to turn the lights on, only about a quarter of them worked. In the chaos of tight deadlines and large number of crews, basic things fell through the cracks and nobody stopped to confirm that the new apprentices had been shown how to use wire nuts. The foreman actually had to move another crew back to the lights to go over and rework every single connection. Wire nuts do take a little bit of skill, but it's a skill that can be learned through proper education and training. In this case, it likely would have just taken a few minutes to show those apprentices how to do it correctly, which would have saved a lot of rework time. Little off script here, but just for clarification, the reason all of their connections failed is they weren't aware how to connect stranded wire to solid wire. And with all of the light fixtures, having solid wire in them and pulling stranded wire from fixture to fixture, they were unaware of that problem where the conductors will walk out of the wire nuts. And that's what the problem was. Most of the splices had that wire pushed out of the wire nut. A wire nut isn't just a temporary connection to get the power back on. It's a permanent mechanical and electrical connection that should provide years of reliable service when it's installed correctly. As electricians, it's on all of us to pass these fundamentals down properly. Have any questions or tips of your own? Drop them in the comments below. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Bye.